Let us talk now to uh, Dr. Alero Roberts, uh, who is uh, our regular here. Dr. Roberts, it's nice to have you with us. Dr. Roberts, as usual, joined us from Ikoi in Lagos. And here's another naughty one. Thank you for your time. I can see you now. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, there's another naughty one. Uh, as you've probably been here, I've just been speaking to uh, a representative of uh, the eateries and restaurants. They were kept... Uh, at the level of takeaways for a very long time, and only last Friday were allowed to start, at least in Lagos, uh, some level of uh, in-house uh, uh, dining. What are the things, maybe I should start off from that, what, what are the things that you're expecting to see them do? Well, thank you very much for having me. And um, I, I listen with Robert, that is super uh, yeah. And I think he pretty much mentioned everything that is being done and needs to be done in line with the public health guidelines that the Lagos State had put out. However, you know, he did mention the, the, the larger picture that this is um, going to create. And this is what for public health physicians is of interest because, you know, we've been walking this fine line between the virus and the economy. And, you know, this is another example of where the virus has hit the economy and the economy has to recover from the virus and not just the health of the, the patrons to the eateries. It's very difficult because you can't, you know, you've got these guidelines which more or less fix the larger players in the industry. And then you have the Abbasira, you know, how do we enforce, how do we sanction, knowing that in many, many cases for these women, Running an eatery, a buka, a, a roadside canteen is the way they feed their own children and their own families. And they rely on these patrons to come in and patronize them so that they can make the money that they need. This, this is part of daily paid work. It is a very complex industry, and these are the things we need to remember. However, you know, I think what is most important is that everybody takes collective responsibility. Wear your mask, wash your hands, maintain a distance, you know, try and limit the crowds that come in at the same time, you know, and limit the queuing up and the, the crowds, you know, have a lot more eating out and eating outside, that is, you know, have a lot more outside dining. It's a very, very complex industry and one that will require a lot of inventive uh, innovations. However, he did say something about the three to five years recovery. And I can't help but think that probably this is going to allow a new, new lines of business to open up, new innovations. You know, even the people who do the cleaning in the restaurants is going to be a new line of business and a new line of occupation. So I don't think it's all gloom and doom. I think we do need to, you know, work at making sure that these public health interventions that we're putting in place become part and parcel of our daily life. I've got two other things that I've got to raise with you. These are developing stories. Uh, first, uh, the, big, uh, the big announcement about international flights. Uh, there had been so much uh, prevarication about that and the fact that, look, uh, everybody was scared that if you did this, then we we're going back to square one. But right now, we've finally chosen August the 29th. What do you make of that? It is good news because, unfortunately or fortunately, we are part of a world trade uh, system and until there is international travel and international trade, a lot of the economy probably will not fully recover. And that's just it. We can't continue to live in a bubble. You know we have community transmission within our own country. And therefore, I don't know that we're in any more danger. If the protocols are put in place, we don't just say open up and allow everything to be as it was before. We need to maintain these protocols. We need to test these protocols. And we do also have the option of slowing things down a bit if we find that there's a huge spike. But so far, we've been five months. We haven't seen this huge spike. We do seem to have um, flattened the curve, as it were, and gotten to a position where we are not overwhelming our health system. So it is good news. The WIAC exams, uh, the last time you were on, that was another uh, hurry uh, chestnut that we were trying to pull out of the fire uh, because so many people were worried and so many people were concerned about this. But now the exams themselves are has, uh, has started. Did they meet up with your expectations or are there still areas that you, you probably think you know, still need looking at? 
Oh, they certainly did beat up to our expectations, to my expectations at any rate. I did see the reports that I've been put in for my giving the Anikeja, and they, the students did look very easily spaced out. You see, examinations are, why people hate me for this, I know, but examinations are pretty regulated and therefore easy to carry out. Not easy in terms of the expense of having 23 classrooms to maintain, but if you know, while the students are in the examination hall, there already is an exam protocol where they have to sit still, be quiet, and just do their work. I do wish them all the very best, by the way. But that is an easier one than, say, the E-trees, because you can have the students come in, which they already do with or without the COVID protocol. Students have to come in one by one. They are positioned, they are placed, they are watched, they have to be quiet, there's no talking. And so an exam situation can be at least a little easier to regulate and monitor than, say, the opening of the restaurant. So things did look very good, and I'm sure, I pray the students are ready for these examinations and we haven't completely, we will be able to get them through and they will get good results. I can't let you go without asking you about something that also happened earlier today, but not, this time not in Nigeria. Uh, out in uh, uh, Spain, there was this protest with people saying they were tired of wearing face masks and uh, they wanted to be free uh, uh, of the issue of uh, COVID-19 and that they wanted things to go on and so on. Talk of mixed messages at the same time that some are having to return to closing their borders because they're experiencing a second wave. What can I say, lad? I mean, I Spain is a country that has suffered some pretty serious numbers in terms of COVID cases and even worse still COVID deaths. <sighs> It is as it is. There's nothing we can say. I think it's, I, I, you know, the people who do that kind of thing, unfortunately, open themselves up to great risk. And my message to everybody is you don't have to be one of the statistics. You don't have to be one of the cases in hospital or worse still, a fatality. Please wear a mask. It's as simple as that. Wear your mask, wear a face covering, wash your hands with soap and water. If you do not have to be out in a crowded place, Please don't go into a crowded place and maintain a physical distance. All right, then. Thank you so much, Dr. Roberts, uh, for your time and for your perspective on those various subjects. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much for having me.